from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, this is Vincent Price. I'm calling from Hollywood. Oh, sure. My name's Shirley Temple. Now, who is it and what... Really, Vincent Price? Do I sound like Mickey Rooney? Well, no. But now, tell me, Mr. Price. Now, look, the name is Vincent. Okay, Vincent. What can I do for you? Johnny, I have a little problem in connection with one of my paintings insured for $100,000. $100,000? You call that a little problem? This painting has suddenly disappeared. Oh, I see. What's the insurance company? Four State Mutual. Oh, well, they have a small branch office right there in Los Angeles. Yeah, I know. But Bert Parker, the man who sold me the policy and should take care of this matter, well, every time I've called him, he's been out. And I learned just this morning that nobody knows where he is. Okay, Vincent, I'll grab the first plane. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Four State Mutual Insurance Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the price of fame matter. Expense account item one, 178.50, plain fare and incidentals, Hartford to Los Angeles. By the time the big silver constellation made its landing at the International Airport, it finally dawned on me that I hadn't arranged with Vincent Price about where and how and what time I'd meet him. But as I picked up my luggage, I discovered a hungry-looking crowd of autograph hounds running about the tall, gracious man I was looking for. Oh, sure, sure. I'm glad to. Look, but just one at a time, will you please? I can't very well. All right, there, there you are. Now I have to oh, be friendly. Oh, just one more, please. Huh, Mr. Price? All right, if you insist. Here. Best wishes from T. Willie Rocking Horse. Huh? <laughs> How are you, Johnny? Oh, great, but I didn't Johnny? expect... Johnny? Johnny who? You mean to say you folks don't recognize Johnny Dollar? Oh, no, wait a minute. Right a boy, Johnny. Give them all. I'll wait for you in my car. It's right over here at the curb. Yeah, but look, will you? Hey, right here, Mr. Oh, Dollar. No, 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 I'm nobody. Please. By the time I got away from that mob, I felt as though I'd been run through a ringer. But we finally took off in Vincent's car and drove to his beautiful home up in one of the canyons west of Beverly Hills. Nestled among the trees with spacious lawns and well-kept gardens, it's furnished in the most excellent taste. I'm no expert, but to say that I was impressed by the extraordinary works of art in that home would be the understatement of the week. Engravings, prints, fine sculptures, but most of all, paintings. And even to my unpracticed eye, all of them were, well, magnificent. Here's a little thing I picked up in London, Johnny. It's called The Old Man in Red by Goya. Wow. Yeah, I thought original oils by him were found only in the big museum. Well, I've been pretty lucky in getting hold of some of these. Yeah, you've known what you were doing, too. Mm. You like this one? It's called Fright. It was painted by uh, Kenneth McManus. Uh-huh, beautiful, beautiful. Like all the rest of them. Thanks. How about this one here at the end? Uh, Night Wind by, uh... I'm sorry, Vincent, I can't make out that name. You don't have this one lighted like the rest. No, that's to maintain its somber mood, Johnny. Oh. And that's what made it possible for the substitution of this copy to go undetected. That's a copy? Yeah, and that's my problem. The $100,000 Night Wind by Jean-Baptiste has been stolen. This was left in its place. Oh, I see. It's not a bad copy, probably worth a couple of hundred dollars, but it's hardly a genuine Baptiste. Well, when did you discover this uh, substitution, Vincent? When I returned from a lecture tour early last week. Oh, that's right. You've been traveling all over the country lecturing on art. Well, let's you? call it talking about art. Hmm? Tell me, have you notified the police about this? Well, I suppose I should have. Well, I felt that was Bert Parker's job. And you haven't been able to reach him over at Four State Mutual. Since I told you on the phone, he hasn't been in his office for some time. Vincent, have you any theories about who might have done this? <laughs> yes, I, I'm afraid I have. Why do you say it that way? 
Very few people knew I'd gotten hold of this Baptiste. Only some close friends and a couple of art experts. So? And the place was not broken into during the time I was away. Of that, I'm sure. Well, go on. Well, the family and servants kept very close track of anyone who entered the house while I was gone. You have a list? Yes, I, I do have a list. Here. Good. Alfred R. Hawkinson. That's an electrician who came to do some wiring. He wouldn't know a Rembrandt from a Mickey Mouse. And M. Schumann. The music teacher. Loves music, hates painting. What about delivery boys, people like that? Oh, they never get beyond the back door. Go on, read on. Hmm? That next one is Ben, the gardener. You can forget about him. And Bert L. El- huh? Yeah, Bert Parker. He was here twice. What for? Well, ostensibly to check on some of the paintings he'd insured. The first time, on the 11th, Mrs. Price was with him while he poked around. On the 15th, she had to leave to keep an appointment. And just when he left the house, nobody seems to know. Oh, brother. Are you thinking the same thing I am? Now, look, Johnny, I haven't known Bert very long, and, well, he seemed like such a harmless little old fuddy-duddy, as for his knowledge of art. Yeah, I wondered about that. Well, he was perfectly satisfied to take my evaluation on the two or three things he'd insured. So... Well, Johnny, I I may be all wrong. Vincent, a thing like this may only happen once in a thousand years. In any event, the company will certainly make good your loss. Well, with a work of art, it isn't really the money that counts. And Johnny, listen. Look, I may have jumped to a completely unjustified conclusion about Bert Parker. Oh, yeah? Sure. Well, let's go down to his office and see. We'll return to Johnny Dollar and the Price of Fame matter. That's Vincent Price in just a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the price of fame matter. A priceless original oil painting, stolen from the home of Vincent Price, famous radio and picture star. One of the few people who'd had the opportunity was the man who'd sold him the insurance on it, Bert Parker. Together, we went to Parker's office at Four State Mutual in downtown Los Angeles. It was on the 16th that Mr. Parker phoned in to say he wasn't feeling very good and wouldn't be in for a day or two. Hey, it was on the 15th that he was at your house, Vincent. Yes, that's over two weeks ago. And you haven't heard from him since, Miss Pritt? No, Mr. Dollar. We've tried calling his apartment, but since there hasn't been anything really pressing here at the office... What's we the address weren't... of his apartment, please? Well, it's out in Westwood, 1308 Pandora Avenue. Look, Vincent, I'm going out there. I'll call you if I find... You're need transportation, aren't you, Johnny? By the highest price chauffeur in the country? Sure, why not? Oh, uh, b- uh, before you go, Mr. Price, I wonder if... <laughs> if I could have your autograph. Well, why didn't you get Johnny Dollars, Miss Britt? He huh? loves to give them. Oh, oh. yes. Oh, no. Uh, no, you don't, Benson. Let's go. It took a little persuading, but the landlord at Britt's apartment finally let us into his four-room suite. It was empty, except for a few old clothes, and it was obvious that he'd packed and left in a hurry. I rummaged around in the closets, tables, bureau for a clue as to where he might have gone and came up with nothing. Can you give up, Johnny? Yeah, Vincent, I'm afraid so. I poked around that desk some more after you'd finished with it and found this wedged in behind a drawer. Oh? Travel folder. Paris. Yeah, it looks real fresh, too. Minor travel agency, Beverly Hills. Well, what do you think? Uh, pretty much of a long shot, Vincent. But they do pay off sometimes, don't they? Planned a trip for myself, yes, sir. First class all the way. What was the departure date, Mr. Miner? 16th, first class, straight to Paris. Oh, brother, Paris is a pretty big place. Did you make any arrangements for him for after he got there? Only for when he arrived. Reservation at the Louvois. What? The hotel, Louvois. <laughs> the Louvois, perhaps. That's what I said. Oh. First class, too. Said he wanted something not too far from the Montmartre. Uh, Montmartre, if you don't mind. That's what I said. Yes. Now, can I fix you gentlemen up with some plane reservations, too? Well, suppose you give me the same flight he took, and I'll stop at the same hotel when I get there. Hey, wait a minute, Johnny. You're not going to leave me out of this. Well, look, I'm still playing a long shot, Vincent, a very long one. Well, what's the difference? Also, I don't know if my expense account will get by the home office. Expense account, forget it. I'm having a ball. Mr. Miner, start making those reservations. Expense account item two, $984 for the plane to Paris. Well, it turned out to be the most interesting flight I've ever made because of the company of Vincent Price. An amazing conversationalist, he could talk about anything, including art. 
and he has a tremendous sense of humor. So, as he put it, we had a ball from the time we took off in L.A. till the time we sat down in Le Bourget. Item 3, 520 American, taxi into the Hotel Louvois, where the manager was, uh, well, somewhat helpful. Oh, may we, may we. The Missy Park uh, leave us but only two days ago, after some uh, slight misunderstanding about uh, l'addition, the, the deal. Eh? Yeah, you mean he was running out of money? Uh, monsieur, I did not say that. But that's what you meant, isn't it? You know where he spent his time around here? Mm, but of course, uh, his business, he say, took him constantly to uh, Montmartre. Where in Montmartre? <laughs> Who is to know? Uh, that's like saying somewhere in Brooklyn. Ah, Brooklyn? Uh, perhaps you know my cousin. Johnny, eh? he wasn't... Uh, Johnny, uh, I uh, just got an idea. Shoot. Uh, works of art, even very good ones, are sometimes sold in rather, well, rather unorthodox ways. They, they go through some rather strange hands. They're not always sold over the counter, so to speak, by reputable dealers. You know what I mean? Yeah, but how to contact the kind of people who might... You got any ideas? Uh, why don't you just go on up to our suite and sit tight for a while, hmm? I'll see what I can dig up. You are keeping something from me, Vincent. Mm-hmm. But, Johnny, there are some things even Funk keeps from Wagmuth. I'll see you later. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Price of Fame Matter. All of gay, romantic Paris just outside the door and time on my hands. So what did I do? Took Vincent Price's advice, went back to my room at the Hotel of Bois and waited. Two, three, four hours. Finally, shortly after 8 p.m., Vincent came in bearing a couple of packages. Ah, uh, sorry to have made you wait, Johnny, but... Uh... I think I'm on the trail of something. Looks to me like you've been on a shopping spree. Props, Johnny, for you. Have you found out where Bert Parker is? No, but I think you will. <laughs> Here, try this on. Huh? What's this all about? A ten-gallon hat. Yeah, I had to guess at your size. Where in, ha- where in Paris did you find this? Try it on. Oh, what are you... Holy... What am I supposed to be, a refugee from Texas? Exactly. You made it in oil wells. Your name is Matthew. Huh? You're over here to see the sights, all the wild nightlife you've heard about, the Folie Berger, Rue Blondel, Place Here, try on this shirt. Oh, brother. Look, I don't know what this is all about, but hadn't we better get something to eat? Try it on. If you don't take me to one of the world-famous restaurants in this town. Maybe tomorrow. Huh? Yeah, that's good. That shirt's going to be all right. What do you mean, tomorrow? Here, now, stick this genuine simulated imitation diamond-type stick pin in the front. Oh, wait a minute, I'll do it for you. Yeah, what? Well... What the Sam? There you are, and with this big hunk of glass on your finger. There, now, look at you. Oh, you look. I'm hungry. Well, maybe you'll even get food where you're going. Now, where do you think I'm going in this rig? To a little joint on the Rue Blondel called the Bal Macabre. Now, what am I supposed to do there if I go there? Sit around. Look prosperous. And see what happens. Oh, Vincent. Remember, you made it in oil. Millions. Yeah, but Vincent... Also, you... you're interested in art, and your name is Matthew. Look, will you... On your way, Johnny. The taxi that's waiting for you out front knows exactly where to take you. The Bal Macabre was really a joint. It was dirty, and the people packed like sardines in it were dirty, too. Characters who made a business of being characters. And everybody screamed at everybody else. Except, that is, for the wormy little man who sidled up to the postage stamp-sized table on which my glass and a bottle of wine were balanced. Who? Have down. You, you are Monsieur Matthews, are you not? That's right. From Texas? No. Oh, uh, yes, sir, partner. The great and glorious state of Texas. Sit down and pour yourself a glass of this here red ink. Who are you? They call me La Chagrin. What's that mean? Well, well, what you call the gray cat. (laughs) Hey, that's cuter than the name of my old friend Coyote Bill. Well, do you enjoy the Paris nightlife? Oh, you know something? I'm getting fed up with it. Yeah, I think I'll just buy me a couple of nice pictures and go on back home. What uh, kind of pictures, monsieur? Well, good ones. Oil pictures. Like that Mona Lizzie I've seen at the Louvre. You know, good ones, I mean. Well, like a Jean-Baptiste, perhaps. 
You mean you know where a man could get a hold of a genuine one of them? Well, for a price, of course. Well, listen, I got money and I'll spend it. Well, I offered them $500,000 for that Mona Lizzie, but they turned me down. But if I could get a hold of a genuine Baptiste, well, partner, you just name the price. Oh, well, I make no promises, Mona Lizzie, but I, I do have a friend. And for a slight consideration... Name uh, your price and take me to it. I will be waiting for you at the corner with the taxi. Um, that is what you call okay? Okay. I shall be waiting. I'll be there, partner. You bet I will. And I'd certainly like to know how Vincent set this up. The taxi dropped us off at one of the most disreputable-looking apartments in the whole of Paris. My friend, who called himself the Great Cat, looked carefully around before entering the front door. Then we climbed four flights of a dark, musty stairway. No, remember, my friend, you are not to pay the price he asks at first. If you like, I will make the arrangements for you. Now, that would be right friendly of you, partner. But how would you come out on this? Well, all I ask, monsieur, is 10% of what you pay. And maybe a little extra from him for bringing me up here? Oh, monsieur. Oh, now, don't give me that, partner. I've been around. I'm wise to how you fellas operate. If I can get a hold of a real genuine Baptiste. You will see. Yes? Who is it? I have brought a friend, Monsieur Matthews from Texas. Yes? Yes, he would like to buy the night wind by Baptiste. That is, if it's genuine. Genuine? Of course it's genuine. There, on the table. Can't you see for yourself that it's the... Oh, no. Well, well. Bert Parker. Johnny Dollar. That's right. Insurance investigator. Investigate you? Oh, I will... I just remember somebody is waiting for me. That's right. I am. Mr. Price. Oh, no. Well, don't be you, Price, but I must go. Without your fee for taking care of Mr. Dollar? Listen. Listen, both of you, please. I'll give you back the painting. I'll do anything you ask. Oh, I'll drop that. Oh, dear. Dear. Well, Vincent, there it is. Yep. And it looks like the company has saved a cool $100,000. I, um, I have a confession to make about that, Johnny. Yeah, like how you happened to know the way to the painting through that squirmy little fellow who brought me here? Oh, well, that's how I got hold of the Batiste in the first place. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely thing, isn't it? Yeah. It certainly is. And, Johnny, it is worth 100000 Oh, I'm sure. But the truth of the matter is I paid only $300 for it. You bet. Oh, no. It's a fact. <laughs> well, you've got it back thanks to your own efforts. <laughs> thanks to your being the front man. If I'd tried to get it back myself, these people would have run like scared rats. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, just tell me one thing, will you? Why aren't you an insurance investigator? Well, you know, it's every man to his own. <laughs> well, after all, why aren't you an actor? Uh, yeah, let's get out of here. This position of Bert Parker, well, that's entirely up to the company. Vincent, now that he has the painting back, doesn't care one way or the other. However, from the company's standpoint, well, it's not the kind of black eye that's good for you. Expense account total, including incidentals and transportation back to the States, $2,341. Remarks? Well, to Vincent Price, my eternal thanks. Not only for the help on this case, but most of all because it's given me a chance to really know him. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the heart of sunny southern Jersey and a case that took a very sudden, very strange twist. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. 
Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Junius Matthews, Tony Barrett, Forrest Lewis, Howard McNear, and of course, our special guest, Vincent Price. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.